Hello YouTube, this is Tutoring Potential and today we are going to begin the Florida EUC, which is the end of course assessment for geometry. This is the practice test uh, available and downloadable from Florida Virtual School's website. This is part one and uh, the best way to do this is to go ahead and download and print out and complete the practice test and then go ahead and follow along with any questions you may have. Please comment and go ahead and ask questions um, as you feel I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here a little bit. Okay. You probably see this one's already a little bit worked out. And the figure, what is the measure of BKM? BKM is this angle right here. And what I'm going to use is I'm going to use... Uh, the fact that line DE is parallel to line AB and it makes HI a transversal. There's a lot of terminology in geometry. Um, also, angle KML is going to be equal to angle JKM. That's what we're going to use um, to solve this problem because those two are alternate interior angles and alternate interior angles are equal. So what I'm going to do is now that I've solved for JKM which is this one right here, I know that's probably still hard to see, JKM and BKM form a linear pair. So they are supplementary, they add up to 180 degrees. So what I do is I take 180 degrees, I subtract 32 from that, and I get my answer 148 degrees. That is number one. One more. Number two asks in the figure what is the measure of MKJ? wants to know M K J one thing I don't like is that they've marked these uh, in green they've marked them with one arc each uh, and that really should be reserved for angles that are equal but I'm not gonna nitpick I, I guess that's how they're they're gonna go ahead and mark the test uh, so let's see what we have here. We have a quadrilateral and let's see what we're going to use to solve this one. If those two are parallel then angle MKJ and angle KM D are equal. So these two are equal. Uh, that's again alternate interior angles. The first two questions have been alternate interior angles because AB is parallel to DE. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 180 degrees, I'm going to subtract 58 from that, and I'm going to get 122 degrees because DMK and KML are a linear pair. They are supplementary. They add to 180. So I get 122 here and I'm going to get 122 for this one for angle M K J which is what I want which is D
Moving into frame, what is the most accurate name for the triangle below? Well, again, I worked this out. That's a previous take. This uh, it was marked on the test as a right angle. That it had a green box, and I just darkened it in. So that tells me that this is a right triangle. It has one right angle. So it's not going to be obtuse. It can't have both a right angle and an obtuse angle. And it's not an acute triangle because it has a right angle. And it's going to be isosceles because exactly two sides are equal. Another classifying triangles question, what type of triangle is shown below? Well, an equiangular triangle measures 60, 60, 60. It's also equilateral. A triangle that has an obtuse angle cannot be a right triangle. It also cannot be an acute. Uh, and it, we've eliminated equiangular already. So number four is going to be D. That's just process of elimination obtuse scalene. Any angle greater than 90 uh, is obtuse. And it's scalene because no three no 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 sides are equal. I shouldn't say three. None of the sides are equal because none of the angles are equal. If I want to, I can take 110 and I can add 28 to that to get 138 and subtract 138 from 180. Right, I, I can solve for this. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't do that in a time test. Once I uh, once I eliminate the other answer choices, I would go ahead and choose it and move on. Um, but because I'm recording this as students are beginning geometry, uh, I think it would be better to go ahead and explain some more aspects of the problems uh, than just only what is necessary to to do the problem. Uh, and so, you know, we may not, we may get more parts. We may not finish as quickly, but that's okay because you can go ahead through these and fast forward to whatever you want to see. All right. PR has an endpoint at 25 negative 5 and a midpoint of 18 negative 1 it wants the x coordinate of the other endpoint okay uh, I'm not gonna go ahead I'm not gonna graph this but our midpoint formula is x1 plus x2 over 2 comma y1 plus y2 over 2. You can tell the midpoint formula because it's one of the few formulas in geometry uh, that ha that are a point, that are a coordinate pair. Alright, so I'm only considered concerned with the x-coordinate. So this is x1 and this is my midpoint. So I'm going to say 25 plus, and I'll call it just x, over 2 and I will set that equal to my midpoint 18 and I'm off the screen alright so I'll go ahead and say this is 25 plus x equals 36 x equals 11 uh, again, this is just a printout. Your test may be computerized. I believe most of them are now. So how you actually, um, you know, enter that in, uh, we'll we'll have to discuss at a at a later point. All right. Let's see if we can get through another one here. Segment TV has endpoints at two ten and. 18 negative 18 what is the approximate length of the segment okay this is distance formula all 
x2 minus y2 squared. This is x2 minus x1. Would help if I get the formula correct. This is the square root of the quantity x2 minus x1 plus the square root of the quantity y2 minus y1. It's the, it's the square root of this sum. I, I didn't say that exactly correctly, but you sum these and then you take the square root of that. That's basically to get an absolute value. So what I'm going to do is for distance, I'm going to draw another and I'm going to put these in the right spot. This is going to be x1, y1 if I call that point 1 and that's x2, y2. So if I this is going to be 18 minus 2 all squared plus the quantity 18 minus 2 negative 18 minus 10 all squared That's 16 squared plus negative 18 minus 10 is negative 28 all squared. Now at this point you may be able to do it by punching it right into the calculator, but I'll go ahead and say this is 256 plus seven eighty four so now I'll take seven eighty four add two fifty six and that's the square root of ten forty let me back this out and that should be approximately equal to thirty two and a quarter which is answer choice B for number six, 32 and a quarter. Okay, uh, this brings me to my one of my questions. I'm not sure if they're going to give the students a calculator. They must because they're not going to ask you to do the square root of 1040 in your head. Um, I don't know if it's going to be a four function or if they're accepted calculators or my least favorite which is the calculator on the screen that you have to sort of use your cursor for um, you know if they give you the option I would recommend to take a paper test if they give you the option um, to me that's I, I just I will always score a little better on the same test if it's on pad and paper because that way I don't have to learn some other system of skipping problems and come back coming back to them or anything like that. Okay, uh, because I want to keep these relatively short, I'm going to go ahead and end part one right here, and we will start with number seven in the next segment. Uh, as always, thank you for watching. Please post questions and comments. Uh, thank you very much.